We've got a big one for you today. We are going to look at nuclear power. We're going to look at the money market fund since we didn't do that last week. We're going to look at something very interesting happening with the Bitcoin ETF. And then we're going to wrap things up by looking at some Bitcoin miners real, real quick. Uh, we might also talk about Tesla a tiny bit. There's something very interesting going on there. But, but before we get going, you know what time it is. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you've been with us a while and haven't done so yet. Check out the Trade Cave store link in the description as well as the channel bio. We've got some fantastic products here. Do not sleep on the sticker shop we've got a couple a couple of amazing stickers here i'll be adding some uh, as we go into the future here pretty soon but go ahead and check those out link in the description as well as the channel bio so let's get into this so the economic calendar we've got three feds speaking today so be weary of that we've got one at 9 a.m well that one's already happened we've got one at 5 Oh, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 at 6.40 p.m. Six, uh, Eastern Time. So those are going to be after the bell, so that's going to be some after-hours action happening there. Some leading indicators coming out this morning here in about 10 minutes. We'll see how that affects the market. But overall, not a, not a terribly large market mover day today. Tomorrow is going to be even less with only one Fed speaker. Uh, is there anything that we really need to watch out for jobless claims on Thursday? It's really about it. Existing home sales might move the market a bit, but not, not a big deal. Be uh, beige book. Wednesday afternoon will be interesting as well. All right, let's move on to something uh, exciting here in the money market funds, specifically this right here. Institutions, okay, institutions are decreasing their money market funds. They have decreased it by a little over $10 billion last week, okay, while retail is still piling on. All right, I'm going to say that again institutions are lowering the amount of money they have in money market funds while retail investors are stacking into their money market funds that's a divergence and that's a divergence of smart money flowing back into the market while while retail money is still flowing into safe havens so keep that in mind the puck may be moving faster than we think here going into q4 and it's going to be flowing into risk on likely. And of course, nothing we say here is financial advice or a suggestion to buy, sell, or hold any asset whatsoever. Simply some trends that I'm noticing and things that I see in the data as we go. All right. One more thing here that is non-crypto crypto related and non-Bitcoin miners. This is a sector that is getting very, very hot right now uh, due to AI. Amazon and Google here. Now, this was last Friday. Amazon and Google have, not Friday. Wednesday, <laughs> have plans for fueling their data centers for AI. Nuclear power, they're going to nuclear power. Remember like a year and a half, two years ago, when everyone was crying about how Bitcoin is so uh, power demanding and it uses such dirty, dirty energy and like, the, and, and nobody was talking about building nuclear reactors to fund mining Bitcoin. And they were actually champion, championing against Bitcoin because of how much power it used and how, uh, that was just bad for everything. And, and now that AI is a thing, they're like, Oh, we got to build all the nuclear reactors in the world right now in order to fund and push our AI, uh, dreams here. So, a little bit of a double standard there, I'd say. Uh, but anyways, nuclear power and nuclear-related stocks, uranium in particular, have been taken off. That's something to pay attention to. That's something to look at. Um, I don't have any tickers for you to look at right now. I'll, I'll be doing that in a, a future video, nuclear-specific. I'll try to get that out this week where I go over at least you know a handful of tickers that are nu that are nuclear related that will hopefully see benefit from this trend but that is something that is going to be going on here uh probably for a few months few years potentially because if we look in here um if i find the thing there was one it was let me just type that in 2030 yeah so they're they're expecting this to be like a 2030s sort of thing so you've got like six years to get on the bandwagon for this thing uh you know to wait for good prices on those nuclear power uh but it's just the beginning of the trend because they got to build these things right and it's going to take time uh so there's going to be a lot of time to get in on this one i wouldn't fomo into it right away but it's something to pay attention to because it's starting right now the seeds are being sown as we speak uh about this specifically okay now for the bitcoin news this is big this came out last week two days ago SEC approves options for the Bitcoin ETFs. We are going to get options 
on the Bitcoin ETFs. That is huge because guess who gets to pl start playing now? Hedge funds. Hedge funds are going to start playing with the Bitcoin ETFs because before they weren't going to do it because there weren't any options. They couldn't play both sides. They couldn't hedge their bets. So they weren't in it. Now that they're going to have options on this thing, ooh, boy, they're going to be coming in. They're going to be coming in with a lot of money. This has got a lot of egg on Gary Gensler's face, I would say, because isn't he the one saying that he's so against Bitcoin and crypto and how it's all just criminal activity? Why does he keep approving everything then? If he really believes that, if that is really, truly his opinion of this entire space, why does he keep approving double leveraged Bitcoin ETFs, options on Bitcoin ETFs, Ethereum ETFs? Well, what's next, a Dogecoin ETF? I mean, if these are really unregistered securities and he's so against the criminal activity of, of crypto, why, why do these things keep getting approved? doesn't really track. Anyways, they're approved now, though, and they're going to be coming soon. And this is very, very, very exciting for the flows of Bitcoin. However, Monday morning is going to slap us in the face pretty hard right now. Uh, Bitcoin is down to $67,000. We got about a $3,000 dip from yesterday. Okay, we are down 2.71% right now. We were at a high of 69.5 and we're down to 67.1 right now. And that was all within the same day. Now, is this going to be the dip before the rip? Seems like that is potentially possible. Um, basically, what I'm going to be watching right now on Bitcoin is these two lines right here, this pinkish line and this bluish line. As soon as this blue line comes down anywhere below the 50 and this pink line crosses up above it like it did here. Let me let me go back here. Like it did right here. That was the bottom, right? 60 something thousand. That was October 3rd. And then went up from there. Uh, here we go right here. And then we had the cross up eh, in between these two candles here. We had the cross up somewhere in here. Uh, that was the bottom. And that crawled up pretty hard from there. Uh, let me go back over here as well on this indicator. Same thing we had right here. This one, this pink line dipped, and then it went up and crossed over between these two candles here. And that was what? That was the bottom. Oh, wait, here's another one right back here. Uh, September 7th, these two crossed over on each other. And that happened on this candle right here, which wasn't quite the bottom. It was the candle after the bottom, which seems to be a theme here. The candle right after the bottom is the one they do the cross up. Uh, and then that was indeed the bottoming area where it just took off from there. So what am I doing right now? I am waiting for this blue line to come down and this pink line right here to curl back up above the blue line, indicating that a bottom is in and that we are flying higher. And when that happens, as long as that happens above the 21 day moving average, which is currently at $65,130, as long as it happens above that, I am looking for this thing to come up to 70,000 plus. All right, so that's what I'm doing right now with Bitcoin. Uh, and Bitcoin, uh, while this is, a bit of a slap in the face for Monday, and I'm sure it's hurting the miners dramatically. We'll talk about that in a second. It is below the five-day moving average, which means the 21-day moving average is opened up for us to come to. Okay, that could happen. as potential that that could happen. But look here. Looky here. Looky here. We got the 50 about to cross over the 200. That is very, very exciting and very good. I want to see that. That's going to be fantastic. When the 50 crosses over the 200, you better believe we're not looking back. Okay? As long as it stays above it, you know, it confirms above it, I should say. <laughs> we're not looking back. Okay. So that's Bitcoin right now. We're coming down, but there is hope here. And this doesn't look too bad. This might be the dip before the rip. This could be that pre-election volatility we've been talking about for a little while on the channel here. Okay. Let's look at the watch list for the day. What's going on? Actually, the Bitcoin miners really aren't suffering that much, okay? They're down slightly more than Bitcoin for most of them. BitFarms is actually down less than Bitcoin, so that's good. CleanSparks down 3.5%, BitDigital down 3%, BitFarms down 1.2%, Mara down 3.92%, Riot down 3.35%, Iron down 2%, CoreZ down 1.4%. Wolf actually up, bucking the trend, up almost 2%, 1.8% currently. Hut down 1.66%, Cypher down 2.11%, Hive down 4%. 0.33% SLNH Soluna down minus 0.76%. Uh, so that's just the real quick and dirty of it. I'm not going to go into all those tickers right now. Just a quick, like they're currently they're down. Okay, they're down. Wolf is up. Uh, Bit Digital is down less than its peers currently. So it's Soluna. Interesting. That's all we really need to talk about right now with that because we got to see the shakeout. We got to see how the day closes. I want to see what's going to come tomorrow out of this move here before I really have any opinions about what's going on right here other than, hey, they're kind of down today. Be aware of that. Okay. Uh, so let's take a look at MicroStrategy because I'm actually interested in MicroStrategy right now. I'm trying to get back on my wheel here. Trying to get back on my wheel. All right. Stop staying up here. Come down here. Come to my box. 
All right, anyways, we're done with that. Uh, <laughs> this is actually doing the opposite of Bitcoin. So notice how my pink and blue lines are uh, kind of opposite of Bitcoin right now, where they're hanging out near the top for MicroStrategy while they're hanging out near the bottom for Bitcoin, indicating Bitcoin's looking to break out. And MicroStrategy may not necessarily be looking to break down, but is looking for a pullback, okay? Uh, as soon as this pink line, yeah, you know, right here, this pinkish line crosses below the blue line, I'm looking for this to come to the 21-day moving average. I think MicroStrategy is due for a date with the 21 moving average. It's not quite you know, ready to move on from that thing yet, and it's got to give it another chance. Uh, and that's all the way down at 183. Remember I said it'd probably come back to it around 187, 190-ish area by the time that it does get back down to the 21-day um, moving average. So my box here, the 21-day moving average is already almost outside of my box here. I think if we're going to get into my box, my box between 184 and... 174. Uh, if we're going to get in there, it's likely going to be a wick. It's going to be very, very short lived because by the time we get down there, we might be looking at something like this on my momentum indicator here where the pink and blue lines are hanging out near the bottom and they're about to cross up and look right here when it crossed up. So first of all, it crossed up and it went down a little further, but then it crossed up one more time and look at that 100% rip. Beautiful. So that's what we're looking for here. And of course, look back here. The cross downs were very small, very small. You know, we had one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three of them. The next one probably gonna be a little bit bigger. So be aware of that we are looking at potentially a double top on micro strategy. We've got a top there whoop, and a top there. There's there it is. A little bit better. Neckline on this thing is at uh, 192. So if we get below 192, we're going to have a bad time on micro strategy right now. That It will show us that a double top is coming in. And the bottom of that double top is honestly about, it could go as low as 160. Honestly, it could go as low as 160, potentially, potentially, if things get real bad, back down to 140. Honestly, if this thing gets back down to 140, you better believe, better believe I'm picking up 100 shares of this thing and I'm not doing the wheel anymore and I'm just going to hold it. I'm just going to hold it up to 240, maybe even $300 and make that $10,000 <laughs> I missed the other month on this thing. So uh, I am actually kind of salivating, waiting for that sort of move here down for it to come back potentially to the 50 day moving average again because it hasn't done that since September. So that's not, I mean, it's not that long of a time. Actually, it could stay off of that for a real, real long time. Uh, for micro strategy, yeah, we've been over the 50, over the 200 for quite, quite some time here. Um, yeah, hitting the 200 was really a big deal for micro strategy. And I think at the lowest right now, we'd hit the 50, and that would be a short lived experience and then launch absolute launch from there. Now, I wouldn't wait for the 50 to get into this thing. And of course, nothing I say is financial advice or a suggestion to buy, sell, or hold any asset whatsoever. Because um, the 50, it may never come. Uh, if we bounce off the 21, then we bounced off the 21. And I'd be watching for that sort of move as well, because that would m retain a very, very bullish experience out of micro strategy. Okay. One more thing to talk about today, and that is going to be Tesla. Tesla is having a bad time. Okay, so ever since it came out, so it came out that the robots at the, 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 the Optimus robots at the iRobot, or not iRobot, that's a movie, at the Wii Robot, I think that's what they called it, ex, um, event in Los Angeles that they actually had people behind the controls of many of those robots and that it wasn't a truly autonomous experience. People didn't like that. They felt lied to. They felt like, you know, his tech isn't where it needs to be. Uh, I mean, the robots are impressive in on their own, and perhaps they didn't want to trust, you know, AI uh, acting all on its own in, in a press event. So that's possible. But people didn't like it. All right. They didn't like it, and it makes it feel like the tech is further off. So that is why we're getting this, like, really compressed move right now out of Tesla. Now, what's going to move it out of that? Potentially earnings potentially earnings. That is the only thing that could potentially move this out of, move us out of this is earnings. If earnings on Wednesday, this Wednesday, are good and Tesla breaks out and up above the five-day moving average, preferably above 224.59, I'd say 225 just to be safe, 225 above 225, that's going to make this into an island reversal down here. All right. If we get a big gap up due to earnings, that's going to be an island reversal. We're going to find ourselves back up at 240, potentially even 250, 260 very, very quickly if earnings come out good. Everyone's going to forgive Elon for deceiving them with the robots, and they are going to uh, send us higher to 250, 260. Uh, one thing to look here is right now we're getting a green, potentially green hammer on the daily at the bottom of a move. That is a very, very bullish little candle down there. What else is exciting to me down here is we can see down on the force, average force, 
is getting less, right, on the negative side. So it's getting smaller. This, this, this bar here is smaller than the previous bar. You can also see that there's a divergence of momentum. The fast stochastic is moving up while the gamma line is still moving down. And also the orange line here is moving down, but this thing can be influenced near the top. Like it can start to like go down a bit or even flat and then go up higher. And when that happens, when that, when it, we reignite and we see the orange line curl up uh, after starting to come down a little bit, then it gets really hot. Like we can see this thing coming up to the top of the ATR band in a matter of days, if that is what happens. So I'm watching this very, very closely. I'm waiting for earnings. I'm not doing anything ahead of time. I will wait for the gap the gap up and I'll get in on the go. I'm not front running this thing because if earnings are bad, if they are bad, 200 here we come. So pay attention to that. Be careful. Uh, don't get too crazy. Don't get too excited. Uh, stay calm. Uh, <laughs> anyways, that's all I've got for you today. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this video. Check out the Trade Cave store link in the description as well as the channel bio. Do not Sleep on the sticker shop. We've got some nice affordable stickers now over on Redbubble. Link is also in the description as well as the channel bio. And have a profitable day.